What you're saying, this is the level to watch. And of course, a part of oil's drop relating to China devaluating the yuan for the third consecutive day. Credited for advising his clients to get out of the stock market before the October 1987 crash, Gloom, Boom and Doom report publisher Mark Faber has made numerous prescient calls. He is with me now on the phone from Singapore. Mark, thank you so much for the time. Glad to have you with us in these extremely volatile days. Where do we go from here? You probably just heard my colleague Phil Flynn saying he thinks we've reached the bottom for oil. Do you agree? Well, I'm not sure. First of all, if you look at the weakness, not just of oil, but of all industrial commodity prices, it's a signal that the global economy is not strengthening, but weakening at an alarming pace. Uh, The Chinese economy is nowhere growing near what the government is publishing uh, in July. Car sales, and this is the first time in a very long time, uh, were down 7% in China. And yesterday I talked to someone who has dealerships in China for luxury cars. He said car sales have hit a brick wall. And exports are down and so forth. So when the weakness in China becomes so evident, it also affects all its trading partners. And China is the largest trading partner of 124 different countries in the world. But so Mark, I mean, the, I don't mean to cut you off, but this fact that it's not growing at 7 percent, many market participants already thought that. So I'm wondering what the new news is in your point of view. The new point of view is that it's nowhere near 7% and more likely closer to 2%, if any growth at all. Okay, that is that is a pretty if big any difference. any growth at all. That is the point. You have also said you see a 100% chance of a global recession. Do you still think that that's true? It's something you said about a year ago. Do you still see that happening? Yes, I think there is a deceleration of economic activity everywhere. The U.S. has done relatively well, but also in the U.S. there are now cracks that are appearing, industrial production, new orders for durable goods, and so forth. If you look at the trade balance of the U.S., uh, imports are up and exports are basically down. You look at corporate announcement of United Technology, Caterpillar Tractor, which are big companies in the industrial sector. Uh, Their announcements are all essentially negative for the second half. Technology companies have all warned about the second half. Mark, I know you are a value-focused investor. What's on sale that looks good to you right now? Well, I mean, what is uh, relatively inexpensive are, for sure, mining companies. They're very, very depressed. I would also probably include some oil companies and oil servicing companies. You look at the oil servicing industry. If you assume that eventually oil prices will again be higher, which is a question mark. I was just going to say, it sounds like a question mark if you're saying that we're going to hit a global recession. Yes. uh, Well, after the recession, that may be in two or three years time. But I'm not so sure what will lift this time the world out of recession, because more debt is not going to help. More money printing will not help. But more money printing may help precious metals. Okay, speaking of which, gold. Do we see gold back at $2,000 an ounce? Well, not in the foreseeable future. But I believe that central banks, and we've seen that now also with China, they will continue to print money. And if you assume that, uh, then eventually gold will be much higher. I've heard you say, speaking of central banks, that the Fed here in the U.S. is printing so much money through quantitative easing or through leaving rates so low for so long that the U.S. is going to end up like Zimbabwe. Do you still think that that's a likely scenario? I I think it's not unlikely that the U.S. and other Western countries burdened 
with uh, unfunded liabilities who will have to make a choice, either default on their commitments, social security, health care and divorce pensions, or they'll have to print money. And I believe in our society in the Western world that is so politically correct, uh, we will have more money printing. We were just talking about that exact theme with somebody who is saying it's even hurting the way that students, American students, learn in universities. Mark Faber, thank you so much for the time. It's Always my great speaking with you. Joining us there on the phone from Singapore.